You remember that mind-blowing demo of Devin, right? The one where you toss in a prompt and bam, it makes up a whole code base. Well, here's the thing. Devin's gone open source, so it means that it's time for us to get into it. Let's break it down step by step. First off, you fire up Open Devin, and it greets you with a friendly, Hello, I'm Devin. Then you give it your task. On the right side of your screen, you've got this setup. A terminal, a planner to keep your project organized, a code editor where you can look at the code being made up, and even a browser for testing out different models. Alright, now on the left side, we've got the browser. You can pick between Langchain's agent and Kodak's agent. For now, we're just rolling with Langchain's agent. Let's kick off with a new task. And then we head over to the terminal. We can actually see what's cooking. Let's type in the command ls and there it is, laid out before us. It's like reading from an app.py file. Well, it seems like there's already a file in there that does the job. A calculator app. And the best part, it even tested it out for us. After a few back and forths, we've got ourselves a simple app up and running. So, now we've got our calculator app all set up and ready to go. But, how about we take it up a notch, adding an HTML interface to our trusty calculator. Let's fire up a new task and dive right in. Back and forth we go, spinning up localhost, testing it out to make sure everything's smooth sailing. And just like that, it's done. You can run the calculator very easily. Just type in python calculator.py. Or you could spin up a server. Look what it made up in just a simple prompt. Well, we're back in dev and running it on localhost. Yep, all local, thanks to GB4. Here's the cool part. You could easily swap out for an open source model, but wait. Before you dive in, remember this project's fresh out the oven. We're talking days, so yeah, there might be a few bug or two lurking around, but some features might still be in the works. The rate of progress and the number of new features being added is quite impressive. Now we'll show you how to get this up and running. A fair warning, we ran into a few hiccups along the way, but don't worry, we've got your back. Most of the issues, it's not even Devon related. Blame it on Python package management, so fire up Visual Studio Code, click on that toggle panel button, and open up your terminal. Next up. Desktop Central. We'll change the directory to our desktop. Back to the Open Devon GitHub page. Hit the green code button, copy the repo URL, and we're back to the terminal. Type in git clone and paste that URL. Hit enter and we've cloned it to our desktop. Next up, we're going to change the directory from Open Devon. Then we click this little button labeled Explorer. From there, we'll open the folder, search the desktop, and choose Open Devon. Now we've got the Open Devon project open in Visual Studio Code. Alright, now that we've got that sorted, let's spin up a new conda environment. We'll type conda create nod for open devon with python version 3.10 and hit enter. Now we've already got an environment named that since we've gone through this drill before showing you, but you go ahead and install it. Once that's done, grab this command here, conda activate od, and copy paste it. You should see the od pop up in your terminal. Now, the next thing you'll need is docker and trust us, you'll be glad they use it. It makes the whole installation process much easier. To check if you got docker, type docker ps, and if it shows up, you're good to go. If not, head over to docs.docker.com, find the docker desktop client matching your OS, download it, and you're pretty much set. Once that's done, fire up VS Code again and type docker ps. Alright, now you should see at least this top row right here with the container ID, etc. Now, onto the next step, pulling the docker image. This part's very easy guys, just type docker pull gc dot iops slash sandbox colon vo dot one and hit enter. Alright, next up we need to export our OpenAI API key. So first things first, if you don't already have an OpenAI account, hop over to platform.openai.com, sign up for a developer account and head to API keys. Click create new secret key, give it a name, maybe something like odop dvor yt for YouTube and make sure to revoke this key before sharing it anywhere. Copy it, head back, and export it just like that. Hit enter and we've exported it as an environment variable. Now, the better way to do this is by creating an env file and storing it there. But we'll leave that little task for you to tackle. Alright, next up we need to set our workspace directory. So, what we're going to do is set it as export workspace for equals tilde slash desktop slash open dash devon. This way, we're keeping the workspace right within the open Devon folder to keep everything nice and tidy. Hit enter there and we're good to go. Now on to installing the requirements. This is where we ran into a few bumps in the road, so we'll walk you through it. First, we want to make sure we're using the correct Python version for installing with pip. So we'll type which Python just to double check. Grab that Python version, paste it in, and type pip install-r requirements.txt. 
Now, one issue we faced was with Rust. Specifically, the dependency Orison requires Rust, and we didn't have it installed, so we had to install Rust using the command curl, and then restart the terminal. Another problem popped up with Orison, and to fix that, we uninstalled it using pip uninstall Orison, and then installed it again using a longer command to specify the binary version specific to mine. We highly recommend consulting AI for assistance. Just copy paste whatever issue you're encountering and it usually offers some solid suggestions. The command for this is pip install no cache directory only binary all orison. Once you've done that, it should finally work. Oh, and if you restart the terminal, you need to export the OpenAI API key again since all those temporary environment variables get wiped clean. That's why using an env file is always the better option. All right. Now that's all sorted, let's give spinning up the server a shot. We'll use uvcorn for the backend, so let's fire it up. Type uvcorn open dev server listen port 3000 and let's cross our fingers. Now, we've got uvcorn up and running at localhost 3000, perfect. Now let's move on to installing and spinning up the front end. Click the little plus button to fire up a new terminal. Make sure we're still in the open dev folder and the od conda environment is still running. Then let's dive into the front end folder. We'll be using Node and NPM for this, so if you don't have those installed, hit up Google or use Cloud or GP to get them sorted. Once that's done, simply type npm install to install all the front end packages. Luckily, we've had way fewer issues using npm and the whole Node ecosystem compared to Python. Hopefully you won't run into any issues. Now that we have all the Node packages installed, let's spin up the Node server. Just type npm run start port 3001 and hit enter. We'll click on localhost right there. There we go. Open Devon. Let's switch to GPT-4 over here and there we go. We'll say a simple website that says hello world and now we'll see it in action. Starting a new task, you can also click over to the planner. Although we've noticed it doesn't update very often, if at all. And the browser doesn't work all that well, to be honest, but. But the terminal seems to work great and the code editor definitely works. There's the code, the hello world HTML file, perfectly done. It's starting up a server all by itself and visiting localhost 8000. If we actually go over to the browser, it did switch and go over to localhost 8000, so it kind of works. But there's still some bugs, yeah. And if we go back to the logs from the backend, we can see that there is an error here and it exited. It's definitely not the first time we've had coding assistance, far from it. But it's one of the most, if not the most, polished user interfaces that we've ever seen. So, we're really excited for Open Devon, so give it a try. Create issues on their GitHub repository as you come across them. Contribute if you're open to that, and Open Devon can be something really special that helps developers, even non-developers, be really productive at building code. Anyways, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel for more exciting tutorials and tech insights. And hey, if you've already tried Open Devon or have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. Until next time, stay curious and we'll be back with another one.